So the three most common types of proofs are really paragraph, flow chart, and two column proofs. And to be honest, two column proofs are probably overwhelmingly the most common seen now, but we'll discuss all three and we're not going to do proofs necessarily so much as discuss kind of how they work. And the first one is paragraph proofs. That's totally intuitive. You would look and, and in just for an example for all three, we're going to use the same uh, triangles here. And the question would be something like prove that triangle CAB is congruent to triangle FDE. So our job is to prove this. Which proof should we use? Well, we'll use all three. And in the case of a paragraph proof, you literally write a paragraph. You'd say, well, it seems to me that uh, uh, triangle CAB is congruent to FDE because if you look at side CA, right, and the whole time you're writing, you look at side CA, blah, 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 and you end up with this paragraph explaining your logic, right? And that is a paragraph proof. And, and by the way, just for this very specific proof, it's obvious that this side is congruent to this side. This side is congruent to this side. And because Pythagorean's theorem, um, and actually let me, let me put a little 90 in here to make sure we know that. Because of Pythagorean theorem, Fe has to be congruent to Cb. So we can prove this maybe by side, 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 but it'll be a long proof. But again, I'm not gonna do a paragraph proof, mostly because they're going extinct, but also because you get the point. You would write out a paragraph describing why you think that those actually are uh, congruent, right? Uh, now, the second type is a little more common, so we'll break that down. And this is what flowchart uh, proofs look like. So the flowchart proof is a way to kind of visually represent your logic. I actually like these. I think these make sense. And you have a box here, and in the box, you'll make your statement, right? You'll make a statement inside this box, statement. And underneath, you'll write the reason, right? And, um, and you'll do this until finally you come to the conclusion that yes, these triangles are congruent. And so um, here's an example that I might do if I write the statement and reason in these boxes, right? The first thing I might say is that side CA, so I have side CA is congruent to side FD. And my reason there would be based on the markings in the picture, this was a given, so this would be a given. There's oftentimes several givens in any proof that they kind of start out with information that they give you. I might say that um, angle D is equal to 90 degrees, and then I might say that angle A is equal to 90 degrees. And again, this would be given because of the markings. And you'd continue, continue so on until finally you came to the conclusion that in fact, these three triangles are congruent. So this is how flow chart proof works. And again, we're not doing one to its finality. We're just showing you the breakdown. that This is the statement inside the box and that the reason is underneath, right? So for the last, again, and the most common type of proof, the two column proof, it's similar to the flow chart in that you're really coming through with a series of statements and then you're going to explain the reason why you're able to make that statement all the way until your conclusion at the bottom. And I'll give you a couple of hints. The cool thing about two column proofs is if you're asked to do this on the SATs or on a test, you're basically guaranteed a couple things. The first couple statements are always, the reason is always given, right? Because you're supposed to state your givens first. Again, like let's say we knew that uh, CA is congruent to, right, um, FD. And how do we know that? Because they told us, right? So we always list our givens first. So if you're on a test and the first reason is left blank, sometimes I'll leave it blank and your job is to fill it in, you know that the reason is probably given. Look at the picture and make sure, yes, indeed, that was given. Here's another given. We have that DE, right? Segment DE is congruent to uh, AB. So what's the reason for that one? Given. And then here's the cool other trick about two columns. I'm just like teaching you to cheat on these suckers. The last statement, no matter what, has to be the question of the proof. Because remember, I told you I didn't write it. I should have written it. But I told you we're trying to prove that triangle CAB is congruent to FDE. The last statement has to, in fact, be just that. Triangle CAB is congruent to triangle FDE. How do I know that? Because that's the whole point of this entire proof. I chip my way down with statements, reasons, statements, reasons, statement, reasons, all the way till I get to the final statement, which is, and in this case, maybe we'll say it was side, side, side. Who cares what the actual proof is? 
But the point is, my final statement has to be what they asked me to prove because that's my entire job to begin with. And so that's the three types of proofs. Mastering any of them or all of them requires much practice. And, you know, you're going to do a hundred different two column proofs. Some are about triangles, some are about other polygons. You'll do the same thing with flowcharts. But this is the breakdown of the difference between the three, how they look, some patterns associated with each, and, and that's it. So good luck in this section. And, and again, um, don't be overly concerned with doing proofs yet. Let's first identify what they look like.